Hi, and welcome back to Thinking Kingdom Thoughts. I'm Tracy, and today's guest, or today's show is about being a widow in Torah. I just want to thank you. It means so much for me uh, that you come here and visit once a week, and we appreciate it. Um, today's guest is Audrey Nicholson. Uh, she recently moved here from Georgia. She has been a part of the Grafted Church online congregation in Georgia for how long has that been? Uh, about a year. About a year? Yeah. And so she did move out here from Georgia. So we're really appreciative of it. Audra, would you mind leading us on in prayer? Sure. Father, our King, Lord, we love you so much. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to share with others our experiences. Father, we pray that it brings you glory. And Abba, I ask that my words are not spoken, our words are not spoken, but yours alone, Father, that this message reaches those that, that need it, Father. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity and for the blessings of friendships in this congregation in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I always remind guests that we got to speak up loud. <laughs> so how long has it, uh, has your walk been with y'all? Um, 27 years actually. Wow. Yes. Good um, long time. Yes. I was, um, saved and baptized when I was six years old. Um, so I've always had uh, a relationship with Yah um, as as Jesus um, and then after Torah as Yeshua and Yah Yahweh yeah so uh, what is your kingdom thoughts um, during difficult times my tattoo Romans eight twenty eight. for we know that all things work together for good to those who love Yahweh who are called according to his purpose and I have seen that play out in my life time and time again, um, especially when my late husband died. Um, I didn't know how we were going to pay for things, and I just prayed about it and gave it up to y'all, and he provided yeah. in a very surprising way, actually. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, that's how he works. Is we think it's going to go this direction, and he goes, oh, we'll just go this way. Right. <laughs> so, how did you get started with tour observance? Oh, Marcy. Um, so, last year, um, when the world turned upside down, we shall say, um, my late husband and I found ourselves with more time on our hands, and we had questions. Um, biblical questions and so we started digging um, into our Bibles and literally um, sitting side by side um, and looking through our Bible um, Yahweh opened our eyes up to Torah um, it started with our questions about Shabbat about the Sabbath um, so we literally came to this together as a couple wow that you know that happens and then sometimes it's just um, you know, takes time for one or the other to come come in on that. So it's beautiful when couples do that together. That's that's wonderful. I appreciate that. And what made you decide to come so far to be a part of Grafted Church? Um. Well, after I we after we came to Torah. Um, I was looking for something online um, on YouTube and I came across one of Lex's videos. Um, <clears throat> I don't even remember the subject actually, but um, I listened to it and I um, looked into the word for myself, what he said, and I saw that he was telling the truth and he wasn't taking anything out of context. And from then on, I, just, I started listening to him, both um, his ministry, um, Unlearn the Lies, and after I literally watched all of them, I watched all of the Grafted Church's services 
over a period of months, um, even after Brad died. And um, over time, Yahweh started to uh, call me out here to attend Grafted in person. Wow. Wow. And that, that took a lot for a single woman to drive how many miles? A thousand miles. A thousand miles. <laughs> a thousand miles. A thousand miles. For us at Grafted Church. How long have you been a widow? September 29th was a year. So during Sukkot, um, it was one year since my sweet husband died. Yeah. But I was thankful for for y'all's timing though, because I was out camping with um, this beautiful family and that made it a lot more bearable um, mm -hmm. to finally get to that one year more. Yeah, yeah, it had been one your one year anniversary, and he just surrounded you with your people, didn't he? Did. He, he did. He did. Uh, we were at uh, Sukkot when her one year anniversary came up, and so uh, this congregation goes camping for Sukkot and honors uh, the scripture by doing so. So. Um, this is probably one of my most difficult questions that I've asked anybody, but um, what's it like to be a widow in Torah? It is a, a unique experience, um, it seems like. Um, it's a different perspective is a good way to put it. Um, I think it's a lot more bearable, honestly, than it would be if if I were still a Southern Baptist, to be honest. Um, because I found at least with the Grafted Church, we are all so connected. Um, you know, we call, we call ourselves family and, and that plays out. Um, when things happen, we're there for each other. Um, and that's honestly made this a lot more bearable to be part of this family because it really is a family. Um, we are there for each other. Yeah. Through it all. Yeah. Um, we just call ourselves a tribe, don't we? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we are that connected that, um, you know, it's, I've never seen anything like it. I haven't either. It just amazes me, and it's not that it's perfect. No. It's not, and it's not that it has perfect people in it because we're not. Right. Um, but God's got His hands on it. You can see that just through every part of it. Mm -hmm. God's got His hands on it. So, what is your favorite scripture that mentions widows? Um, <clears throat> that would I don't write that down. Um. That would be Deuteronomy 24, 19. Um, and it's, uh, it is a Torah commandment, but it's my favorite because when I read it, I realized that we as widows are not forgotten by Yahweh. Um, so much so that we are mentioned in Torah. So it says, um, when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheep in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that Yahweh your Elohim may bless you in all the work of your hands. And so that just really struck me that even though we, we as widows have gone through this, this heartbreak, we're, we're not forgotten by our Creator, so much so that there is even a law for our protection um, as well as because we are vulnerable. Um, certainly back then uh, we were extremely vulnerable, but I feel like even in today's society we're still vulnerable. Yeah, when we're living out the scripture, um, yeah, I, I would agree with you. Yeah, um, not near as bad, right. but there there is a lot there to deal with. Um, not that I'm speaking as a widow, I just see your struggles and um, see where 
you know, our congregation wraps their arms around you. And uh, I appreciate that. Thanks, thanks to all my brothers and sisters in the tribe. Yes. Um, what has surprised you the most about being a widow? Oh my goodness. Um, oddly enough, to see Yahweh's kindness play out, um, despite having had a relationship with him for so many years, to see his kindness even, even, even while I've watched my husband die, um, I still felt his presence with me in those, those minutes. Um, so to experience y'all's kindness, even, even in death, um, was very surprising to me. Yeah. Honestly. It really is all y'all, all the way. What is your best advice for any new, uh, newly widowed ladies out there or widowers as well? Run to the father run to the Father. Um, I know for some, it's they, they want to run away from him and reject him and even stop believing. Um, my advice is don't do that. Run, run headlong into him and just fall on his, on his mercy and his grace and his love for you. Um, Job 121, um, Job said, Yahweh gave and Yahweh has taken away. May the name of Yahweh be praised. That, that verse um, was my main verse that day when Brad died. Um, just acknowledging, um, you know, that Yah, he, he gives and he takes away and he sees things that we cannot see. Um, I, that's why Paul says, I, I think that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians to walk by faith, not by sight. It's because Yah sees a bigger picture. He sees way more than we could ever fathom. Um, last year, you know, I never could have fathomed living out here in Oklahoma. Yeah. He knew. Right. You know, I never could have fathomed, fathomed these things, but, but Yah knew. Yahweh knew. Yeah. You yeah. know, and his... His way is always right and with perfect timing. Yeah. Um, is there any other comments you would like to speak about that I didn't get with my questions? Um, <clears throat> when Brad and I met and became friends, um, and he told me he was a widower, um, I wanted to understand him better as my friend, as my mentor. Um, and so I read the book, I Still Believe. And that really helped me to understand his experiences, although different, but it still helped me to understand him as someone whose spouse had died. And um, when the movie came out, we actually went on a date and saw the movie together. Yeah. Um, and so I would say, watch the movie or read the book um, because that really prepared me. Um, Yahweh used those things to prepare me for the season of life. Um, I didn't really, I didn't fully really grasp that at the time, um, but he did. And I would say too, um, for both married people, people who are single, engaged, have this conversation. Talk about this possibility of one of you dying and leaving the other. Um, we had the conversation. It, it, it is difficult and it is uncomfortable and all of that, but it was a necessary conversation that, um, I'm really glad that we had. Um, it really helped knowing, you know, what he wanted in the, in the event that this happened. Um, so talk about it. Have that conversation. Um, 
pray about it, you know. Um, if you're single, plan to have this conversation when that season of being single is over with. Yeah, good advice. Really good advice. You know, there's a lot of things that um, we dread talking about for one reason or another. And um, that has always been known as one of the more difficult conversations to have. Um, we know God has us and we will sleep until the resurrection. And um, so as as the person who's passing, you know, we can look at it that way and, and get excited. I had a celebration of life party for my mom after her funeral um, to celebrate her life. And she had uh, multiple children. I'm the baby of 12 and uh, between his, hers and ours. And uh, so she had eight of those 12 and uh, you know, she needed celebrated, you know, for all the lives and all the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. And she even had great, great grandchildren. She had lived a long time and had lived on her farm uh, alone up until she was either 83 or 85 doing things on her own. And so, um, you know, obviously the, all of us kids helped out when she needed something that she couldn't handle to do. Um, but uh, yeah, that life needs celebrated and um, being joyful about, about the passing and knowing when they are Christian, you're going to see them again. And that's something to get excited about. Although we'll miss them will miss them dearly um, and excruciatingly sometimes painful when we miss them. Um, I'm sorry. But at the same time, they need celebrated and that's my point. And so get that out there, share with your partner what it is um, if you're single maybe even share your wishes with your parents or your siblings um, have it recorded so that it's so much easier once that time comes they speak for themselves mm -hmm. you know yes and that was something mm -hmm. that you did yes i do have a recording of um, brad clearly stating um, his desires uh, in the event of his incapacitation and um, that helped greatly um, as a reassurance to myself that I did make the right decision um, when the time came. Yeah. Definitely have that recorded if you can. <laughs> right, possible. right. Because then it is, it's your wishes or it's their wishes coming across. And then if you start having any kind of doubts, because, you know, Satan's good about that, mm -hmm. um, trying to put that on us or maybe we put it on ourselves and um, just that guilt sometimes is part of part of the stages of um, mourning and you can always go back to that video and go it was exactly what he or she wanted or yes. what I wanted yes so uh, would you be willing to come for another show yes absolutely. all right sounds good so um, I, I think we're done with this and we appreciate any comments that y'all want to make. Audrey will be watching those. If there's questions to her, um, we'll get them answered. And we just thank you again for coming today and enjoy God's journey. <laughs>